Well, why don't we go take a look inside okay. and uh, see the amazing, amazing build. You're, you folks are going to be drooling, I'm afraid. Oh, don't, get a, don't build it up a, too much. <laughs> have a, have a, uh, a cloth ready to, to get the drool. Everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today, we're meeting with TR. Hi, TR. Hi. And as you can see behind us here, a gorgeous, a fantastic Sprinter. And once we get inside, you're going to see just how fantastic it is. So, TR, are you a uh, retired and full time, or how, what I'm, are you doing out here? I'm retired, and I'm out here because I found work because I need work to to stay alive. Kind <laughs> of. So I came out because there's good pay for a good job in Vegas briefly, and I really like that lifestyle of just going places in my van. I live in the driveway when I'm at a job, and it works out really well because that's what this van's made for. It's got all my tools and my living in it. So. Right. So are you traveling full time or? I won't say full time, no. I, I'm, even when I'm home home, I'm down in my van every morning for breakfast to make my espresso <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So I, no, I'm not full time. I can't claim that. But you travel quite, it sounds like you're on the road a lot. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing this a little while. Yeah, so I, I would do that. And um, I don't blame my wife for not wanting to be on the road full time or anything like that. That is not her choice, her style. You know, we, we want to have the freedom to live how we want to live. And I can't think that's why a lot of us are out here. She grants me that freedom and, you know, I grant her the freedom of me not pester her to come with me all the time. So, so it's working out really well right now. I've actually known quite a few couples in which one wants to go and one doesn't, and they just work out a balance for okay. themselves. Okay. And for a lot of people, it's, it, the balance is always different. Actually, I, it's surprising the number of women I have found who the man doesn't want to go and the woman does. So it goes both ways. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see a lot of the videos, so I, I should have picked that up, but uh, yeah. it's just not hers. And, and she's got a great life that she lives too, so I don't blame her. <laughs> you just find the compromise that yeah. keeps you both happy. Yeah, yeah. And and we've taken a couple of little trips, so we know what it's like to be out together and we enjoy that, but yeah. but it isn't where she wants to be all the time. The animals at home, the, right. the farm and the garden and all that, Right. it's hard to really love and live that way and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna be on the road, so. It's just not her thing. Right. Actually, I have known uh, several couples who one of them has to have their fingers in the soil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other kids can't do that out here. Right, right. So, well. so you're out as much as you can and right. for work. Right. And uh, you needed a home to be in out here. And so you built your own. Yeah, and I originally wanted to be building vans. I'm a general contractor just by life experience and license and all that. But I've done a lot of other things too. So this is one that I've always kind of had in a back pocket because it's always been a natural thing for me. I've built vans, I think I mentioned to you earlier, like a Honda Civic was my first vehicle in 1976, and I built it in 1978. Um, and ever since that point in my life, I've been building some form of a vehicle. And when I wanted to get back into construction, I thought I want to build vans because, you know, everybody did, of course. And so I've built three of these, and the first two got, you know, somebody else is using them now. Lucky for them, they, they bought them. Built them and sold them? The first one I traded in on the second one. And the second one, I sold it to friends. This one, I'm probably never going to sell. It's a great van too. Gets good mileage, 19, 20 miles to the gallon. Yeah. I drive it real easy. Um, it is four-wheel drive, which I had to have. You know, which it has everything I want, uh, except for serviceability. Yes. Uh, <laughs> serviceability is a rough one on these. It really is. That's a, the downfall of the sprinters, mm -hmm. very much so. Yeah. Otherwise, they're the best rig ever made. But once they, you still got to take them in to them serviced, and then they yeah. pretty shaky. And it's infrequent, so that's good. It's like it every 10,000, every 20,000 miles. I think my oil changes are every 20,000 miles, wow. which hard to, hard to beat that. And I drive it easy enough that I'm comfortable with that concept. Yeah. Well, why don't we go take a look inside okay. and uh, see the amazing, amazing build. You're, you folks are going to be drooling, I'm oh, afraid. Don't, Get a, don't build it up a, too much. Have a... Have a uh, <laughs> A cloth ready to, <laughs> to get the drool off. Okay, let's go take a look inside. Well, this van was built primarily as a work vehicle. It's it's a 170. It's a big van. And uh, that's basically because I want to have a lot of tool room. I can also put, put four by eight sheets of material standing on edge in here, not flat. But I've done that a lot. Uh, pallet of concrete bags, you know, whatever wow. you need. You can just get them in here and do the job because there's, there's a big space here. Um, these boxes are just boxes. Um, I've taken them out of other projects that I've done and, and turned them into boxes for these spaces because these spaces were were made to be tool boxes that are half this height. They have some of these that are half that height and they all fit here. So these are all spaces for this kind of box if I ever want to shove them back in. That's what they're for. 
but I just had these boxes lying around and I preferred to use them for clothing sometimes. And this is obviously better than the, than the toolbox. And then it's got that lip and it's a piece of walnut that just doesn't wear its so hold, you just hold. have to lift it out and over. Yeah, and it's not as pretty sounding and all those kinds of things, yes. but if you don't have that, then you do have a slider on there. You know what, we all know what happens when you've got good glides, even the ones that hold pretty well. You do probably have to come up with some kind of a mechanism. Right. And with the boxes, I don't, any more than this lip, I don't need to put anything there to keep them from flying out because they don't, they don't come out. Um, now this piece right here is a lift out piece and there's another one for that side. And what these do is they span this base right here this, and so that it becomes a giant flat area for a queen size bed. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got the bump outs a little bit, as much as you can do for a sprinter without putting the actual uh, aftermarkets on there. These faces are just pieces of plywood with a handle on it. And I've just, I've just gotten some of these rigid basket toolboxes and the handle screws hold that on. And then I threw in a couple extra on the plate just to make it stable. But I can haul these boxes in and out of a job site, which is what those are down there as tools. This is food, obviously. So these two up here are food boxes and everything else is tool boxes or maybe some clothing of some kind. But um, I, cho I chose the boxes because they're also where all my tool boxes go if I want to throw all those back in. Right, that so, will fit in either one. Yeah, I can get like 11 of them in here or something like that. Anyway, this is how it travels normally. There's not usually any more stuff than this. So this is a Murphy bed. Um, it, lead, it just folds up against the wall, which I can do right now if you want me to. Sure. Okay. couple of clanks when I do, but nothing to fear. These boards usually fall over when I do this. But I just gather them up and stuff them behind the bed right here. There's a nice little shelf there. And, and I, you got a whole workshop right there. Yeah, I do have a big Velcro strap that I throw on here when I'm when I'm going to be uh -huh. road road yeah. worthy and all that kind of thing. Right. And you know, originally on my first van, this is my third that I've done this with. The first was 144 though short. I did build it to, to work inside of it and that never happened. So I've got a lot of cabinet space, you know, shelf space in here, what do you call it? Countertop space in here, mm -hmm. but I don't do any work in here. Uh, there's no need for that. Now, I guess to me, what I'm most excited about in this van build is that I do everything with these. I just think these are fantastic. I've had several of them. It's a goal zero. This one's a 1500 X. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a 6,000 at home, which is crazy, but yeah. it's for my whole house. And you know, cause everything's right there. Yes. All the possibilities are right there. Right now there's 400 watts of solar just cause I plugged that in there. But if I know that I'm gonna be on the road on a cloudy day, I can plug the red circled one in there. That's the engine. I don't like to leave that one plugged in cause it, the van will turn off the battery and stop charging this thing. But I don't wanna take that risk. Got a great sink from Ikea. I've put this in a few vans. You've got two 11 or 12 gallon tanks. Uh, they're really, really far in the back, which is not great, but that's where they are. So that those little eye bolts are going into a plate that's covering up one big tank. And on the right, that fish board behind you is also another tank. So they're both sides. And then all my pump system is right in here. That's right where the wheel wells are. So that's kind of where I know to balance things. This one's just a hollow space because there's nothing in there. That's what would be there if I didn't put the pumps and whatnot behind a panel. Oh, right. That's the wheel well. Yeah. Behind that is the wheel well, and be, behind those is the water tank. So a lot of room back there on these 170s. So this is, this is a four gallon uh, 110 AC hot water heater inside there. Um, got a porta potty, got a, a guy's porta potty here. Uh, I've got, I carry two ways to, to cook things. I've got a the butane stove and I've got my little oven that I get out and set on these counters every morning and make my toast. And you can see my four gallon hot water heater in there too. And then this is my, everybody knows about these, I guess, for their ceiling fans. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little insulation, which also helps keep things quiet in this cabinet. That's why it's set up like that. It keeps everything still and keeps it from rattling around. This is my daily routine, just to open this up and get the hot water going, make my espresso. Um, I'm buying some instant coffee and seeing I can just uh, convert go to instant coffee. I like my espresso, but I don't feel like I have the lifestyle and the money to have a espresso every morning anymore. So I really like this. I had this done in Idaho Falls. Uh, did the upholstery shop do that? 
Yeah, it's like a boat canvas kind of place. Oh, yeah. I think it's called Idaho Canvas or Canvas of Idaho in Idaho Falls. Um, this is kind of pricey, I think, four fifty, but it's super, super nice for this. I mean, as yeah. far as temperature and moisture control, um, I lived in Ashland all winter last year, so this gets very cold, and I didn't want any of my moisture to be, be getting up front. And it helped right. a little bit, helped a little bit to keep that moisture down. It didn't mean I didn't have some some uh, fog inside my windows, but it helps. And of course, heat and cold. And I've got my Wabasto heater down there, right there. It's a what kind of a heater? Wabasto or whatever those oh, things are, the diesel, diesel powered, yeah. yeah. Which, which of course I use a lot, but it's also, it's I think it's gummed up or something, which people say that you have to service them and clean them every once mm -hmm. in a while. And these are pretty quiet and they certainly do the job. Yeah. They certainly do the job. Even so. as big as this van is there. Oh yeah. And this is, this is one inch poly ISO. Every millimeter of it is sealed with heavy tape inside and out, outside seams as well before I put it up if I can. It's just super well insulated. And then I did these windows. I guess we can turn around and look at those. These are just a piece of half inch um, styrofoam insulation wrapped with a piece of carpet. And then I stuck a piece of eighth inch plywood on the back of it. And that's all it's holding it together is these little screws through the carpet and a little eighth inch piece of plywood. So they're not super, super tough, but they sure do the job, right? Right. And they just go up behind these during travel. And so do the back ones. These actually fold. So these just fold and go up there behind those bungees also. Then these are breathers for the water tanks. Somebody's probably gonna ask you that question in, your, in a right. video. <laughs> so we've got these big tanks down here. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I can fill or maybe I can at least have breathers here. Um, the filling regurgitates at, all, at most flows. So even though this is an inch and a half or so, you put a hose down that and turn it up much, it'll regurgitate it out. So not a super good idea for fill unless, and it's right behind you, unless you open up the top of the tanks because you can certainly open up the top of the tank and fill it that way. There's one on each side like that. And these tiny little holes in the tops of these caps are plenty for getting the air in when, when I draw from the system, you know, because um, it's drawn much slower than these can draw. So that's about it for me. Well, it's phenomenal. If you, if you want to work uh, out of your rig and live in it at the same time, this, I don't think you could be improved on this. Yeah. It's, it's a, a whole shop in a van. Yeah, it's, it's got that going for it. And also people are, you know, if I'm gonna go and do some nice work for somebody, they want me to show up in something that they're used to. Right. I don't think that sounds fair to anything or anybody, but sometimes I get that, that privilege junk of, of people will let me park, you know, because I've got this dang van, you know? Right. If I had the van that I could totally be happy with, which is maybe a pop top Ford Econoline 350, which is an awesome van, I'd be happier because that's more me but then there'd be some places where, you know, they'd be saying, oh, well, yeah. you know, I don't want this guy coming and doing my fancy work because he doesn't drive a big expensive vehicle like right. we do. I don't know. Anyway, that's how I kind of started when I got these. And now I'm totally away from that. I don't want expensive looking vans. If you look at the outside of this, there's most of the logos are taken off of it. You know what? It is what it is. So I'm not going to argue. I'm waiting for it to get old. I'm looking forward to it becoming an old van. You know, I've got some dents and scratches on the side over right. there to kind of make it look like, yeah, this is a work truck, you know? Um, but I totally appreciate how awesome it is. I also feel a little weird about driving around in a van like this, cause this is kind of over the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, it's nice. Well, it's, it's your work, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just a, it's a business expense as yeah. much as anything. Yeah, it's an image thing, you know, and I'm trying to go in and tell people this is the work I do. So, um, and I'm gonna charge you for it. Right. And, you know, if you want to see how I work and all that, you can see right here. <laughs> this is like going to my house almost and saying, hey, this is how this guy lives. And do we want him in my house doing my cabinets and stuff? Right. Exactly. No, I, I, I think that it's, you made a good decision. <laughs> but it's, it's, it also, it's unfair. I agree. It's unfair that you have to look away, look a certain way or anything right. like that. And you don't have to, but it's, it's out there. So. Yeah. We I, saw your, uh your porta potty there and mm -hmm. what are you doing for showers i can with my short man hair go right over the sink and wash my hair real easily and of course i've got this sprayer that just obviously reaches way outside um i don't know if we looked at that or not because it's just kind of dangling right there in front of us to see there's a big long hose it takes a shower outside if i want to um, but yeah i'm good with the sink right here and, and yeah. this time of year or this location in the country nothing like a cool stuff washcloth sponge yeah. bath i mean that that feels so good it does um, and it doesn't use any water yeah 
So I've got 28 ish gallons of water, but I don't need to do that with it. And on the toilet part of it, uh, try never to use the porta potty, but and, you know, it's like, there. like in the, like in the two years, it's been right there, uh, twice, you know, right. so yeah, <laughs> I, will, I will never be able to justify something like this again. I'm sure of it. And I'm okay with that. But, uh, this is a, a holdover from my recent past that I'm, I'm happy to have. I was working in the emergency room in Oregon last because I'm a flight medic by trade before. And that's a, that's a huge stress for me. It's too much. So this is a real nice place to be. Um, and uh, I'll take this. That's still a lot of fun. I would listen to all the podcasts and watch all I can about it still because it's still exciting to me. But this is a place my brain can handle. <laughs> right. So folks, I think you got, I'm sure you've been uh, really excited and inspired to see all these great ideas. Hopefully simple stuff. It's very simple. I mean, yeah. the boxes is uh, really a simple idea that works so incredibly well. So folks, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.